Hello girls and squirrels, happy Saturday and welcome back to my channel. As you guys saw by the title, it is that time of year again, the time of year where I bring you the fashion trends. And I always get so excited for these videos. You guys just hype me up so much on these videos and I love it. My little heart just can't take it. I love it so much. You guys are amazing. Now, last season, I tried something a little different and I split up the videos into different parts. So I did a part one, part two, part three, part four, instead of doing it all in one video. And you guys didn't really seem to like that as much, but that's okay, because we can always go right back, baby. <laughs> So today's video is going to be all one big video. I will be leaving timestamps down in the description below in case you want to bounce around, bounce back and forth, skip, whatever you want to do. That'll be down there for your convenience. So just in case you're new here, I do these videos every fall and winter and every spring and summer so that you can keep an eye out for them in the thrift store, whether you're a seller or you're just a fashion lover. I like to give you guys this information so you guys can keep an eye out for these trends in your thrift store so you know what to pick up for your shops, either on Poshmark, Depop, Etsy, eBay, wherever you sell clothing, and also you can get some inspiration for yourself. So without further ado, let's jump on into it, shall we? Okay, so we're gonna start with the decades that are on trend. And just keep in mind with any of these trends, none of them are in any particular order. So first up, we have 80s influence. And the reason I say 80s influence instead of just 80s is because we're not necessarily seeing a ton of like 80s pieces, but we are seeing like touches of 80s, like the bright colors, a lot of denim, some tool, peplum is coming back, which we will get into in our overall trends, but just these little pops and touches of 80s. Whereas in the past, we have seen like a full 80s resurgence where the whole outfit was 80s. This time we're just seeing these little pops of 80s. Next up is 90s minimalism. And again, it's not just overall 90s. Although we are still seeing a lot of 90s vintage being worn, what's really popping off right now is 90s minimalism. And I cannot tell you how much I love this trend. I'm obsessed with 90s minimalism. It's giving very parent trap. I've always been obsessed with Miss Elizabeth James from The Parent Trap and also Chessie. I just love, even though they have two very different styles they come together with the 90s minimalism and it is just oh so good i will definitely be keeping an eye out for those 90s minimalist pieces okay so our last decade that is really on trend right now is the 2010s it was bound to happen eventually fashion tends to go in 20 year cycles and i know we're not quite at 20 years with the 2010s but we are starting to see it trickle in and i have a feeling that it's gonna blow up within the next few years the dresses over pants or the dresses over jeans we saw a lot in street style for spring fashion week and I also saw a lot of the big like 3D flowers. As you can see right here in that first picture, she's got like a big 3D flower right here. We'll also get into that in overall trends. But yeah, the 2010s, here they come. So I also do want to say that Y2K is very much still on trend. The reason I didn't put it in with all the decades is because it it's not so like being hyper focused on we're really starting to transition into the 2010s but definitely keep picking up those y2k pieces all right so moving on to color here is the pantone palette for spring and summer 2023 but there are a couple specific colors that stood out and i do want to talk about so first up is sunny yellow just this bright it's almost kind of like marigold in some senses. Um, I know yellow can be a really tricky color to pull off depending on your skin tone, but we saw a ton of yellow in all shades, especially just this bright, vibrant yellow. Next up is Tangelo, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's tangerine, but it's got a little more yellow undertone to it. I actually really love this color. I don't know if I could pull it off, but I love it on everyone else. Next on the list is pink, and we saw a ton of pink pop up because of the new Margot Robbie 
Barbie movie. I almost got tongue twisted there. Saying Margot Robbie and Barbie at the same time was, my brain wasn't ready for it. <laughs> But we are still seeing a ton of pink. We saw this a lot last season in fall and winter and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Next color on the list is white. And when I say white, I don't mean like, I mean, yes, obviously white is a very staple color and you can do it just, you know, white top, whatever color pants. But we're seeing specifically like all white outfits, which I absolutely love. I think it's so classy and so beautiful. So I am definitely here for this trend. It gives a very like tropical vibe, you know, and I'm, I'm ready for some warm weather. And last on our color list is muted greens. Now these greens are coming in all sorts of shades and tones, but what we're seeing a lot is very muted greens. So not like super neon bright green, but really like the green on my top and the greens in these photos, kind of like a pistachio green or like a khaki green. We saw this a lot with color. Um, I'll go back to the Pantone color chart here, as you can see, there's a lot of like muted and pastel earth tones. And I talked about this actually in my home decor trends video. If you haven't seen that, I will leave it linked down below. Uh, but there was a lot of muted earth tones in home design this year, and it's showing up in fashion as well. All right, so moving on to prints and patterns. First up, we have what I'm calling blur. So it's, it is kind of very tie dye, but it's different. It's, it's more, I don't want to say, maybe organic. It's not as stark and harsh as tie-dye is. It's more everything's just blurred together. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> Next on the list, we have subtle florals. Now, obviously it's spring and summer, so floral is always in, but this season in particular, we're seeing a lot more subtle florals. It's not very like loud and in your face florals. It's just like, oh, like if you look closely, there's some floral. Does that make sense? I feel like I just over explained that way too much. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Sticking with the floral trend, I know I just said we're not doing bold in your face floral, but there's an exception, and that is the 3D floral we kind of already talked about in the uh, 2010s trend. Um, but I saw, I've been seeing this absolutely everywhere with whether it's just a brooch or it's made on the garment itself, or even um, it's showing up in accessories, which we will get to in this video. The 3D floral, it's, it's coming back. So keep an eye out for it. This one might be a little tricky to find, uh, but definitely if you, if you find a piece, pick it up. Next on the list is cottage plaid. So this is more muted tones. It's very, it's giving very um, Chip and Joanna Gaines. It's giving Magnolia, you know? It's, it's a very Southern cottagey plaid. Whereas, you know, in fall and winter, we tend to see a lot more like grungy plaid. And for the past few years, we've been seeing a lot of grungy plaid, but really um, there has been just such a resurgence of this cottage plaid. And this specific photo of Kate Moss, this uh, photo was going around everywhere. Just this laid back cottage vibe that she has going on. I'm, I'm loving it. I don't know about you guys. I'm a little late to the like Yellowstone train, uh, but I have been binging it lately and I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed and I just want to live on a ranch um, and dress like this all the time. All the time. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so next on the list is organic geometry. I almost got tongue tied on that one too. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? So kind of like how we already talked about with the blur trend, we've got this organic geometry that is instead of being like these harsh, not harsh, but like crisp lines, we're seeing a lot more of those organic edges on geometrical patterns. And last on our list of prints and patterns, I don't, I didn't know which category to put this into, so that's why I made it last, and that is patchwork. Uh, we're seeing patchwork in all kinds of different styles. We're seeing it as more like color blocking, but also like your grandma's quilt. Um, we're seeing it kind of done in like this bohemian scarf style. So keep an eye out for those patchwork pieces. 
All right, so now that we've got those specifics out of the way, let's move on to the overall trends, starting with unique necklines. Now, what I mean by this is just, it's an, it's an odd shape. It's not something that you would typically see like a V-neck or a scoop neck or crew neck. It's got a little more detail to it. It's a little more interesting. I've been seeing a lot of the necks where it like dips down and goes up like this, kind of like in the top two photos here. I've been seeing that a lot, especially in corsets. Now, again, this may be something that's a little bit more difficult to find, but probably not impossible. And if you're good with a sewing machine, this is something you could easily DIY. Next on the list is sheer skirts. Now we've been seeing a lot of sheer popping up lately. This is reminiscent of Y2K. So we've been seeing sheer trickle in a lot for the past few seasons, but this season specifically, there were a ton of sheer skirts. And I honestly really love this trend, like with a long t-shirt and the sheer skirt just kind of popping out at the end. I love it. Now finding this in the thrift store may be a little tricky. I do have one tip and that is to look in the lingerie section. I feel like that is where you're going to be able to really find this trend. Um, obviously still check the skirt section cause you never know, but the lingerie section I think is your best bet for this one. Editing Christina here for a tip. I didn't think about this tip until I was editing the video and that is to find a sheer lace dress and just cut the lining out. I have done this so many times and you layer a graphic tee over it and it gives the effect of the sheer lace skirt and nobody will be the wiser. That doesn't make any sense, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's 2 a.m. Back to the video. <laughs> Moving on to our next trend, which is all denim. The Canadian tuxedo, baby. I I love this. I love this, but I'm, I'm a 90s kid. So like I said, it's giving very chessy from Parent Trap. I love an all denim. Definitely keep an eye out for like lighter weight denim shirts, like the button up ones, because uh, those are really good transitional pieces when uh, we're transitioning from winter to spring. Next up is bold outerwear. Now we've been seeing this for the past few seasons. It really started to take off last season in fall and winter, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. So definitely keep picking up those brightly colored blazers and brightly colored vests. Next up is asymmetrical hemlines. And this is one of those trends where we are really starting to see the 2010s really start to trickle in. If you grew up in the 2010s, you know what our dresses used to look like. They were most likely high-low style. That was just such a thing. I don't know why, but it's back. Um, and it's not necessarily just the high-low style. We're seeing a lot of like different angles of hemlines. I actually have this skirt that I found a couple weeks ago at the thrift store. This trend comes in all kinds of styles, so keep an eye out for that. It even comes in tops too, so keep an eye out for those. Next up is leather jackets. I know what you're thinking, shouldn't this be a fall and winter trend? And yes, it is. But like I said, with the denim, there's uh, transitional pieces. Maybe look for lighter weight leather jackets. These cropped moto style jackets are definitely very in for spring. When we're transitioning from winter to spring and then into summer, you still have cooler mornings, cooler nights. And this is a piece that you can layer with. So keep an eye out for those leather jackets. Next on the list is loose jeans. The baggier, the better, apparently. <laughs> Um, we're seeing a lot of wide leg styles, a lot of, I, I want to say like the boyfriend style jean. I remember that being a huge trend in the 2010s. We we were on like a skinny jean kick, but then also the boyfriend jeans really made a resurgence. Obviously, there are tons of different styles of uh, denim. Everybody loves denim, so keep looking out for all denim all good quality denim, uh, but this style really seems to be having a moment right now. 
So next on our list is knee length, and this goes for skirts, dresses, and shorts. I know we've been seeing a lot of like micro mini skirts, and those are still very much on trend, but with the 2010s coming back, the knee length is definitely on its way in as well. So that is definitely something to have on your radar. And that leads us to our next trend, which is mini skirts. Mini skirts are still, like I said, very, very in. Y2K is not going anywhere. I did, however, I did see, it was like half and half. It was either regular mini skirts or micro mini skirts. And neither one seems to be having more of a moment than the other one. So just keep an eye out for all of those, the mini, the micro mini. I would say if you sell more on Depop, then the micro mini might do a little bit better. But keep an eye out for all of those hemlines. As long as it's above the knee, if as long as it's knee length or above the knee, you're good. Next on the list is preppy. Now we've been seeing this the past couple years, especially with the uprising of the academia aesthetic. This style of preppy is giving more polo club. It's giving more country club. It's giving, I'm spending uh, the day on a sailboat. So keep an eye out for those summery preppy pieces. If it looks like somebody would wear it in a rom-com on a sailboat, it's most likely gonna sell. <laughs> Next up, we have lace. I saw a ton of different pieces being done in lace, whether it's just the collar or all over lace. Lace is really having a moment right now. And again, like I said, with the sheer skirts, definitely keep an eye out in that lingerie section at the thrift store because there are a ton of lacy camis, tops, even like the little house coats. Um, there can be some really pretty lacy pieces over there. And speaking of that lingerie section, our next trend is lingerie. Um, I cannot tell you how many beautiful pieces I have found in the lingerie section. It is arguably one of my favorite sections. Um, definitely use discretion and proceed with caution. Uh, give it a once over, a couple once overs, uh, but there can be some really, really good pieces in that section. Keep an eye out, especially for cami tops. Um, something that's pretty unique. I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, unless you're shopping for yourself, if you're shopping to sell, then I would keep an eye out for the more unique pieces. Um, and I, one thing I am seeing a lot that was a trend a few years ago is, uh, slip skirts. And again, that's something that you want to, you know, pick up the unique pieces when it comes to that, because the other ones, they're very easy to find. You want to be looking for those pieces that really stand out and that are a little bit harder to find. So next up, we have voluminous. Now, of course, we've been seeing the puff sleeves for a few years now, but this trend is starting to come, it's starting to go all over. Uh, and this is where we really start to see that 80s influence kind of trickle in. Everything was bigger and puffier and that is what you want to keep an eye out for especially when it comes to dresses next on our list is utility pockets we've been seeing a ton of utilitarian styles in the past couple years gorp core was a huge thing um, last season and i think the season before is when it started to trickle in but we're i've just seen a ton of utility pockets not only put on like pants and shorts but also put on dresses um, this is a pretty easy one to find. Again, if you're going to be selling these items, I would definitely narrow it down to more unique styles or just, you know, really good name brands. Next on the list, we have bomber jackets. Now we saw these make a comeback last season and they don't seem to be going anywhere. If anything, they seem to be amping up. This is another really good transitional jacket as we move from winter to spring. And again, if you grew up in the 2010s, bomber jackets were everywhere. So I'm actually, as we're moving through these trends, I'm starting to put the pieces together. I'm like, maybe two, the 2010s is way more on trend than I thought it was. <laughs> Next on the list, we have a relaxed suiting. This is very loose and flowy. Sometimes it has shorts. Um, look for linen suits specifically. This really goes in with the 90s minimalism and also the preppy trend. Next up, we have bras out. They are out. We kind of tend to see this every spring and summer. It gets really hot. I don't know about you guys. I live in South Georgia and 
Like it's already starting to get hot. I know I just said I was ready for warmer weather and I am because it keeps fluctuating, you know, between like 40 degrees and 80 degrees. We don't know what we're doing, but you know, when the temperatures start to rise, the clothing comes off, you know? Keep an eye out for the really pretty bralettes, maybe even like some unique looking sports bras. But there were a ton of outfits during fashion week that really centered around just a really pretty bra. So keep an eye out for those. Again, use your discretion though. Give those once overs, twice overs, third overs. Third overs? Yeah. Give them a good look because you know, bras can get worn out pretty quickly. <laughs> Next on the list, we have the baby doll dress. I love baby doll dresses. I don't, I don't know if I can pull off a baby doll dress. I'm pretty tall, but for my short girlies, they look great on you and I'm absolutely loving it. A lot of these baby doll dresses that I saw had very voluminous sleeves tying back into that voluminous dress trend. So definitely keep an eye out for those. They are just so sweet and very like, they give very cottage vibes and I love them so much. All right, so now we have made it through the overall trends. Let's move on to handbag trends. First on the list is bold. So just like that outerwear, you want to keep an eye out for these really bold statement color bags. We're talking greens, yellows, blues, oranges, pinks, anything that adds a pop of color to an outfit, definitely keep an eye out for. This next trend actually surprised me a little bit, but also didn't now that I'm thinking about it in hindsight. This is another 2010s trend and that is clutches. Now when I say clutches, I don't mean like the little um, hard clutches that we took to prom in the 2010s. Um, I saw a lot of like slouchy oversized clutches. This may be a little bit difficult to find in the thrift store. It could also easily be made if you find a handbag that you really love and it doesn't have a strap on it. A lot of crossbodies I come across don't have a strap on them or the strap is damaged and those could easily be DIY'd into a clutch. You could just cut the little loops off um, and that could be easily DIYable. Um, we, I did see some like envelope clutches and as you can see here, there was a couple of like these more elegant clutches, but really I saw a ton of the big oversized slouchy clutches. How many times did I just say clutches? <laughs> I'm aware of it. Don't point it out. Speaking of slouchy and oversized, our next trend is oversized totes. I am, I love this trend. I love a big bag. I love a tote. I love a tote, Ugh. especially in the spring and summer, you know, I go a lot to like the lake or, you know, we take trips to the beach or, you know, just going around town. We do a lot of like walking downtown and going to little markets and there's just nothing better than a tote. We actually just went out of town and all I took was a tote. Usually I'll take like little mini bags or whatever, like in winter, but I don't know. I was just feeling a tote. I wanted some spring in my step because it was very cold this past weekend. <laughs> Next on the list, we have top handle bags. Now these bags tend to only have one handle and it's pretty self-explanatory as you can see by the photo. It's just one handle on top. Um, I don't know how else to explain that. And before I start rambling, let's just move on. <laughs> so next on the list is boxy bags. I love this trend. You guys know I'm a vintage girly at heart. You guys know I will always choose vintage, always. And I love a good box bag. Now I will say these are a little bit difficult to find. This was also very trendy in the early 2000s. So you may be able to find some of that style in early 2000s bags. But man, if I could get one that looks like the Lucite bag, the one at the top next to the pearl, that is my dream bag. I love her. I love her. It looks like a caboodle, but I don't care. I want that bag so badly. Somebody find it for me. I will buy it from you. <laughs> so speaking of Y2K, next on the list is Y2K shoulder bags. This is another one of my favorite styles of bags. I love a good 
just little mini shoulder bag. I think they're so chic. And honestly, these are pretty easy to find. I don't find them all the time, but when I do, they're usually gold. So keep an eye out for them. And I don't know about you guys, but I didn't used to look in the handbags a lot, but I've really gotten into purses lately. So, you know, mosey on to the handbag section. See what's over there, you never know. And once again, we have another trend that is just screaming 2010s and that is wristlets. Now I know what you're thinking. If you grew up in the 2010s, it, you're thinking of the Vera Bradley wristlet. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. These are chic. These are grown up. A lot of them are in the form of these knot bags. And again, if you're good with a sewing machine, these are actually pretty easy to make. I have found a ton of patterns for these on Pinterest. So definitely look that up if you're looking to get crafty because these are definitely on trend. Um, and we saw a lot of just more elevated um, wristlet bags. This may be a little hard to find without it being too, you know, cause you don't want to go, like I said, stay away from the Vera Bradley wristlets. When I say wristlets are on trend, that is not what I mean. And don't you tell anyone that that's what I meant. <laughs> I will deny it. I'm telling you right now, she's grown up. She's sophisticated. So be, be picky when it comes to the wristlets. <laughs> and last on the list for handbags is textured bags. This is another one of my favorites. I feel like I've said all of these are my favorites. I'm just really on a bag kick right now. But obviously it's spring and summer. We start to see a lot of wicker. Like in fall and winter, we are still seeing a ton of that leather woven bag. Uh, Bottega Veneta does a really beautiful one. I personally cannot afford that, but cheers to those who can. Um, but these are easily, easily found at the thrift store. I find these all the time and they are my favorite types of bags. Um, we're also just seeing a ton of different texture. There's been a lot of like puffer bags and ribbed bags. So keep an eye out for the texture. All right, so now that we're done with handbags, let's move on to shoes. And number one on the list is Western. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was embarrassing. Um, Western, Western boots are everywhere right now absolutely everywhere. I could not make it through like two or three photos of street style when I was doing research for this video without seeing a pair of cowgirl boots. Couldn't do it. Like they are just simply everywhere right now. So there's two categories of Western boots that you want to look out for. These knee high black boots, absolutely everywhere. If you find a pair of knee high black leather or pleather uh, cowgirl boots, pick them up. I got my pair from Target. I finally caved and one of my friends actually got them for me for Christmas, but I had been looking for them in the thrift store for so long and I could not find them anywhere, probably because they're so on trend. But if you do find them, you better cling to those with your life. I mean it. If I find out you passed on knee high black Western boots, I'll be very disappointed. Anyways, <laughs> the other category you want to look out for is just like funky boots. I've been seeing a lot of red, um, a lot of these like contrasting color boots. I haven't really seen a ton of brown. I've seen some, but they're more in the style of the black, like more chic cowgirl boot instead of like, you know, your typical like Ariat boot. Now, obviously those still do sell. It's Ariat and they're always going to sell. Uh, but definitely keep an out, eye out for more chic or more funky Western boots. I think I've talked enough about cowgirl boots. Can you tell they are my current passion? Moving on. Next on the list, we have chunky. So next up, we have chunky. I've been seeing so many of these sandals that just look like clouds. And I don't know if you guys saw, but um, Target released a Lizzie McGuire sandal dupe. So like the big chunky orange sandals that are in this picture right here. And it seems to be for sandals, the chunkier the better. Speaking of chunky, we have another boot trend and that is stompers. Now, 
Stompers uh, can be classified, I guess, as like Doc Martens. There's a lot of things that fall under the stomper category, um, but just these really chunky, kind of combat -y boots. They come in all styles, rain boots, lace-ups. Again, with the sandals, the chunkier, the better. And you guys know I always say with one extreme, there is always another. So our next trend is simple, strappy. This has a lot to do with the 90s minimalism mixed with a little Y2K, uh, mixed with a little 2010s because of these little like sandals. Oh Lord, my ankles. I can feel it. I can feel it. Um, <laughs> just a very minimal strappy heel or sandal. Next on the list, we have thigh high boots. Now I kind of already talked about this with the Western boots, but thigh highs are just very in for spring and summer. I don't know why. Um, I used to get made fun of all the time for wearing boots in the spring and summer. They're like, why do you always wear boots? It's hot outside. I'm like, I just don't. I don't love sandals. Um, so I'm really glad that I'm finally on trend. <laughs> I've been doing this for years and my moment has come. But yeah, keep an eye out for those thigh high boots. Next up, we have a pop of color. So just like the bags and like the outerwear, um, we're seeing a lot of styling with like just little pops of color. So you definitely want to keep a lookout for those bright colors, especially in things like bags and shoes and just accessories in general. Our next trend is a lot like the clutches. When I say it, you're going to be like, oh God, no, no. Um, but there's, it's specific. So the next trend is ballet flats. And no, I do not mean like the round, the extremely round toe ballet flats that we used to get at Walmart and that would kill our feet. I don't mean that. I mean like literal, like they have a strap. These are more like, I guess like Mary Janes, which is on the list. Um, but they're more, they're grown up. They're sophisticated. Uh, it's a, it is a ballet flat at its core, but it's not like we used to do it. So keep an eye out for these, but be picky. That's all I'll say. And that leads me to our last trend, which is Mary Janes. These seem to be absolutely everywhere. Again, like the Western boots, I can't get through, you know, two or three pictures in my research without seeing a Mary Jane. So keep an eye out for those. I, I'm coming around to the Mary Jane. I didn't used to love Mary Janes, but some of these styles I really do love. I think I love like a double strap. Um, it just adds a little more interest, but uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for the Mary Janes. All right, so we are on the home stretch. If you have made it this far, you are a trooper, and I swear these are the last few trends and we will be done. So our next set of trends is gonna be accessories, and we're gonna start with shoulder skimming earrings, uh, or shoulder skimmers, whatever you wanna call them. Um, but basically, it's just the length of the earring comes right down to your collarbone. I absolutely love these. I love this set that's like all pearls, and it's just a long, string of oh it's gorgeous it's gorgina absolutely gorgina um this may be a little difficult to find in thrift stores i know i tend to skip the jewelry just i'll skim it you know as i'm checking out but my thrift stores usually don't have a ton of jewelry you may be able to find some more vintagey pieces like the gold uh, and black fringe ones you might be able to find some of those uh but the long pearls may be a little bit harder to find but just keep an eye out you know, it can't hurt to look at the counter when you're at checkout. Just skim it, see what you see. Next on the list is flowers. Now I already touched on this in the 2010 trend and then also the 3D flower trend. Um, we're seeing a lot of these big floral brooches and also the choker with the big flower is coming back. It is giving 2010s prom, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but it's also giving 1920s, which I'm not mad at either, so. Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna get one of those chokers? Maybe. I might. Ooh, I could DIY one. This is, yeah, this is another one that's easily DIYable because you could just get like a pin. Um, and these um, fabric flowers are pretty easy to find at craft stores. So a little DIY project maybe. I am loving the choker. I just talked myself into it. I just went through the whole stages, all of them, right in front of you. 
you're welcome. <laughs> All right, next on our list is beads. I'm seeing beaded jewelry absolutely everywhere, especially these stacked necklaces, the earrings, and I'm kind of loving it. Am I gonna do it? I don't know. I don't know if I like, like, necessarily for me, if I like, like, the colored beads, um, but I do love a pearl, especially, I've been seeing a lot of these, like, um, they're not, they're obviously not real pearls, but they're mimicking real pearls raw pearls and they're just you know more organic i do like that and i like the little smaller ones so we'll see about this one this is another one that you could easily make if you are into the jewelry making uh have at it have a bead extravaganza and last but certainly not least is hats and when i say hats i mean all hats just keep an eye out for hats i know that's very broad but there are so many different types of hats that are on trend if i was to sit here and list all of the hats that are on trend we would be here all day again use your discretion use your creativity if you see a hat that's cute and funky pick it up because most likely someone is gonna like it and they will buy it if i'm going out i'm most likely going to be wearing a hat i am just a hat girly i love hats um, I think it just pulls an outfit together. So I am constantly on the lookout for hats. I am just loving seeing all these different styles and I'm, I'm excited. And do I need another hat? No. Will I buy more? Yes. Yes, I will. Oh my God, you guys, we made it. We made it till the end. If you made it this far, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite trends are. Are there some trends you don't like? Because I know there's a couple I don't. I cannot wait to hear from you guys. I love, you guys get so hyped for this video every single year. And honestly, it makes me so happy. And it's the reason I keep doing it because I, although I do love these videos, they are hard work. They're hard work, girl. This is like the most work I put into my videos you know, two times a year, it's the most work I put in. Uh, but it, you guys make it so worth it because you guys just love it so much. And I love you for loving it. Man, thank you for loving me. And thank you for being here. I'm going to shut up now and go get some water. If you guys like this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up on your way out. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.